guess we'll go ahead and get started here. Uh, welcome to our program. We're going to be talking about funding your graduate education. Um, I'm going to introduce myself and then I'll let our uh, our panelists uh, who have joined us across the IRA Fulton Schools of Engineering um, and the admissions office, uh, let them introduce themselves. So I'm Mike McBride. I work out of the Dean's Office in the uh, Fulton Schools of Engineering um, in the enrollment and recruitment uh, area. And I'll turn it over to Nicole. Good morning, everyone. I'm Nicole Sanchez. I work out of the Dean's Office with Academic and Student Affairs. And I work with some of our graduate fellowship programs. Suhan. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Arzuhan Kawak. I am a graduate student um, advisor, senior with the School of Computing and Augmented Intelligence. Jennifer. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jennifer Velas, and I work with the Fulton Outreach and Recruitment Office, and I also handle some of the graduate fellowships, specifically PhD fellowships. And Nikki. Hi everyone, this is Nikki Chokshi from the Graduate Admissions Office. I work with incoming graduate students specifically from India. Welcome everyone. Okay, I'm gonna give a kind of a little brief overview of the Fulton Schools of Engineering before we move into the, the funding aspect of, of the program. And um, so, so uh, for those of you who haven't joined one of our other webinars, just so you have an idea of where we are located in the United States, if you're from, from outside the country, we're in Arizona in the southwestern part of the U.S. You can see some of the different larger cities in the, in, in the southwest and in California, you can see how, how far away some of those areas to give you some, some context. Um, on the bottom left hand side of the screen you'll see that we are in the metro uh, Phoenix area it's the fifth largest metropolitan area in the country. Our programs are located on two uh, campus locations, although we act as one university um, and you can consider the two campus locations like the next building over. Um, uh, but uh, the, the campus locations are Tempe and polytechnic and uh, we're in that East Valley corridor. In, uh, in Metro Phoenix, where a lot of our industry partners happen to exist, Intel, Boeing, Honeywell, all those great uh, partners that you hear about in the news. Can't get my screen to move. There we go. So a little bit more information about, uh, about Phoenix. Uh, we are really growing uh, fast. Uh, in particular, in the engineering and technology space, if you if you kind of look around the news these days, you'll find out that Intel is expanding by about twenty five billion dollars here in the Phoenix metropolitan area with semiconductor uh, manufacturing. Um, we've got uh, all kinds of new industry coming in. A lot of the new, um, like Lucid has developed a uh, manufacturing plant just south of the Phoenix metropolitan area. Um, and, and a couple of other uh, electric vehicle companies are also establishing themselves here in, in, in the area. So uh, a lot of new, really good industry and a lot of, a lot of growth that leads to uh, job opportunities for you as you, you graduate. Uh, you can see this kind of gives you an idea of, of the number of students that, that, that we graduate at uh, Arizona State University. And you can see some of the other great um, universities in the country that have engineering programs and how we uh, compare. So we compare very well, very proud of the fact that we are the largest uh, engineering schools in the country in terms of student uh, population and, and very proud of the fact that uh, we're graduating students at a very high rate. So we're called the Fulton Schools of Engineering. We have seven schools. You can see those long thematic names in the center of the screen. Those are our schools from left to right. If you're interested in biomedical engineering, School of Biological and Health Systems Engineering. And we have our Zuhan School, uh, who introduced herself to you earlier, a School of Computing and Augmented Intelligence, where you find computer science, computer systems engineering, uh, industrial engineering, engineering management and informatics, as well as software engineering. Uh, if you're interested in uh, infrastructure related engineering areas, School of Sustainable Engineering in the Built Environment, Civil Engineering, Construction Engineering, um, Construction Management, Environmental Engineering, School for Engineering of Matter, Transport and Energy, perhaps you're interested in Mechanical Engineering, Aerospace Engineering, um, Chemical Engineering or Material Science and Engineering, that's where you'd find some of those programs. 
And uh, if you were interested in electrical engineering, the School for Electrical Computer and Energy Engineering what can be found uh, in that school. And then the School for Manufacturing and Systems Network, that happens to be our newest school. Uh, so we're expanding in the manufacturing area, as I mentioned before in the previous slide, we're really um, doing a lot of new things with manufacturing in the Phoenix area, and we want to graduate students that are prepared to take those jobs. And then finally, the Polytechnic School, uh, where most of our uh, uh, polytechnic majors are located um, in terms of graduate programs, systems engineering, and and uh, and uh, robotics engineering. Robotics happens to exist uh, across several schools, um, depending on the the area of interest for you. So then, to give you sort of a visual in terms of master's degrees and PhDs, uh, you can kind of get a a view here. Um, you can check out the, if you want to look at these in more depth, and we have some videos and all kinds of interesting uh, ways for you to research the different programs. You can see the websites up above uh, on top there. And by the way, after this uh, webinar is over, we will, uh, we will within probably 48 hours or so start posting uh, the webinars within our, um, within our website. So you can go, or you can refer back to them or tell other students uh, how to do so that have an interest. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over uh, to our Zuhan to talk a little bit about um, internships, CPT, OPT. Thank you, Mike. Um, so um, Fulton Schools of Engineering graduate students um, have the option to do a CPT during their studies, which stands for Curricular Practical Training, which is an integral part of your uh, planned studies here. And every student um, has this, every international student will become eligible to do a CPT once they are in the United States and under F1 status for one academic year, which is a uh, academic year is fall and spring semester. So any student who starts in fall semester will be eligible to do a CPT the following summer. Now, uh, terms of the CPT will depend on the degree program you choose to study. Um, for example, uh, within um, SKY, which I'm the most familiar with uh, since I work there, is our, we allow our students to do three internships during their studies, which means that they can do a summer internship as well as fall, during fall and spring semesters, as long as they are in good academic standing. Now, these can change from depending on if SMT may have their own um, you know, rules uh, for CPT. So your best bet is to read the handbook of your um, planned program and get familiarized with that. Generally, students can do a full-time internship, which is 40 hours a week during summers. And depending on their program and their individual academic standing can either do a 20 our internship during fall and spring semesters, or in some cases, they can also do a full-time internship during these semesters. Now, about 57% of our students participated in um, some sort of a internship during their studies. Uh, we highly encourage it. We realize that it's very important for you to get that practical experience uh, so that you become a lot more competitive once you finish your degree with us, which brings us to the OPT. Is that the next slide by any chance or uh, is it the same slide? Next one is TARA. Okay, so I will continue on this slide. Now, OPT stands for Optional Practical Training, and you will do your OPT once you complete your degree program. Now, in STEM fields, which all Fulton programs fall under, the students will first get a 12 month OPT once they finish their degree. And if you have a job at the end of this 12 months, you can apply for the STEM extension, which will give you another 15 months of OPT after you finish your degree. So uh, you can find um, more in information on the website that's on the slide, which is CPT options for Fulton School students. So how about financial support pathways for our students? Now, three out of four of our graduate students engage in at least one of the following um, 
funding opportunities, TARE positions, fellowships, and on-campus jobs. Now let's talk about the TARE options. Um, so um, TARE, TA stands for the teaching assistantship and RA stands for a uh, research assistantship. Now, um, the TA is the primary responsibility is to provide assistance in the instructional process. Basically, you are either um, you know, con con uh, conducting labs or holding office hours or helping a professor with grading. You could uh, lecture um, or have discussion groups. Um, maybe you're an assistant for the laboratory classes. You may be tutoring students, proctoring exams, grades, tests, and papers. Funding, this uh, TA funding comes from the department. Application process changes from school to school. For example, Sky will have an online application that, that any student, any master's or PhD student is welcome to um, complete. Um, again, you may want to check the website, advising office website, or the handbook for your program and see, um, you know, how your school, the school that you're interested in, conducts the um, TA applications. Now, TA could also could be either a what we call a twenty a fifty percent. Uh, appointment, which will come with tuition benefits. It can also be hourly, depending on the type of the, the task you're performing. And it may also depend whether you are a master's or a PhD student. Now, uh, in general, TA generally offered to the PhD students. Um, every school under Fulton uh, tries really hard to support all our PhD students. But on occasion, um, I have seen some students end up getting a TA as a master's student as well. Now, if you have an appointment as a research assistant, your primary responsibility is research related. You're working for a faculty. The funding is coming from a faculty's research grant and you are helping them in their research. Now, this is funded through direct relationship with faculty. This will include tuition support, again, mostly awarded in PhD students. However, under Sky, um, I have seen a lot of master's students in our particular students get research assistance ships as well, because our faculty has big uh, grants and um, they may need a, they don't need a mass PhD students to do a research, but there's maybe a particular programming task with very specific skill set requirements, and they may utilize some master's students for that particular um, task. Um, I guess we could go to the next one. Okay, so um, I think either Shannon or Nicole is going to take this one. I think we can probably tag team this one. Right. Um, so I'll go ahead and drop the link to the um, website that lists and talks about fellowship opportunities within the Fulton School. Um, so within the Fulton Schools, we offer an abundance of fellowship opportunities um, that could be tied to your degree program, that could be tied to your um, graduate level, whether you're a master's student or a um, PhD student. Um, and then also you can find information about external fellowships. So the fellowship portal opens on February 1st. Um, and if you go to that link, you can see a list of fellowships um, to choose from. And if you click on the apply button, you will find what, what fellowship applications are currently open um, based on degree program. Um, and we are currently um, looking at the fall 2022 um, semester. I don't know, if, Nikki, you wanna add anything to that? Um, the only other thing I would add is that there's a general fellowship application, which you will want to apply to. It will put you into the applicant pool to be considered for private donor funding um, based on your eligibility criteria. Every program is different. And that application opens February 1 as well, um, 2022, and it covers funding for fall 22 and spring 23. 
Um, for PhD programs, um, we have a few um, that are out there. Um, for international students, we have the Fulton Fellowship, which is available for incoming PhD students. So if you are intending to um, start your program in the fall of 2022, you would be eligible for the Fulton Fellowship. Um, and then we also have um, block grants that are available. Um, and these are determined by nomination. Um, so I don't know, Nikki, if you know the best way to um, get selected for a block grant. So a lot of the block grants are happen on the backside. Um, the schools and the faculty, they determine by nomination who is selected. Um, that's about all I can share with the group. Um, there's different criteria set by each college, um, but generally they, you know, try to use this money to help support their PhD students that are in need of funding. Yeah, and the Fulton Fellowship too, I would say is um, often um, kind of an add-on to a, a funding package. Um, there are also um, external fellowships that are available. Um, I can drop that link as well. Um, you can look through. These are generally um, privately funded um, fellowships. Um, so you may find um, some more options there um, because they may be looking for specific, very specific criteria, funding opportunities for women, for minorities, um, or looking for specific research areas um, that they're looking to fund. So looking through that uh, list of external fellowships is um, going to give you a few more options on top of what Fulton has to offer. In addition to TAs, uh, RAs, um, and the fellowships, that there are some students that are interested in our uh, MORE program. So it's Master's Opportunity for Research and Engineering. And this allows you to connect with a faculty member a little easier if you, if you don't know a lot of faculty just yet as you arrive. Uh, we sort of mediate this program, so we actually pay the faculty members to, to uh, work with new students that are arriving to get involved in research, and then um, we provide stipends, uh, materials, we even can supply some travel money if you want to travel to a conference or something like that to present your research. So this is another way for you to get a little money, get a little experience in research, get to know faculty, who may be able to help you down the road in, in all kinds of different ways. And then there's a few different examples of, of students that have participated in, in more in the past. Um, Jen, you've hired a lot of students. Do you want to talk briefly about summer, well, jobs, jobs for students and how that, how that works? Yeah, absolutely. Um, a great way to get to know people, to get to know campus, to get to know um, staff and faculty is through student worker positions. Um, we currently have a, a graduate student from India working in our office. Um, he supports a lot of our graduate recruitment um, efforts. Um, and it's, it's uh, usually you're limited to the number of hours that, that you can work, but that's a great way to balance out your academics with a little extra funding to support living here in the States and funding your education. Um, I think the biggest, um, benefit to the student worker position is that um, you know you the opportunity to learn about the Fulton schools and to to get to know people and build kind of that that social network um, while earning a little extra money for college mm -hmm. and as we said before that you know the the, the college uh, is actually the largest college or school uh, at ASU in terms of on-campus students so you know not only does our department hire students but almost every every school and in all kinds of different ways. We, we hire all kinds of, of, of students. And when you arrive, there is usually um, an open opportunity for you to apply um, for jobs. So we'll have like a, just a big sort of get together uh, somewhere and um, we'll have all the openings out there for you, you to apply and, and hopefully get hired and make a little extra money. 
Um, and then, you know, we're going to have more webinars uh, down the road. If you keep track of our international webinar series, you'll, you can read about those. Please encourage other students that have an interest in, in looking into ASU to, to check things out. Um, and, uh, and so I thank you all for joining today. Uh, with that, Nikki, do you want to close with anything? Um, uh, Sure, Mike. So from the graduate admissions perspective, I know this is um, peak season right now for students, especially who are looking for fall 2022 uh, for that semester intake. So keep in mind that, you know, when typically students ask, well, what's the, the final deadline for this program, for example, and, you know, Mike and our colleagues here mentioned we have plenty of, we have dozens of different programs. Uh, each program might have a different uh, you know, priority deadline and a program deadline. So you want to go to the, the links that Mike showed earlier and just double check that you're making sure that you're applying as early as possible. Um, applications might take at least a few weeks to go into the review stage, review meaning where the application actually reaches the admissions committee within that department. So uh, once all supporting documents such as GRE test scores, such as English proficiency test scores, transcripts, et cetera, are combined and reviewed and matched to an application, only then with, is the application considered complete. So just a little um, you know, reminder there for students who are in the application process. And of course, if you've already applied and are waiting for a decision, uh, best of luck. And you're always welcome to reach out to us at uh, on the admissions side, at least, at gograd at asu.edu. I'll go ahead and post that in the chat right now. There is a, um, a question. Uh, I have a GRE score of 320 and an undergraduate CGPA of 8.64 uh, slash 10, and we'll be happy to share my resume. Is there a way I can request for an application fee waiver? We do have a, a form that you can fill out online. For that, I'll see if I can locate that. If any of you know how to get to it quicker, um, let me know and post, I'll post it in the chat. Any other questions? Other questions? Um, for the person that uh, is looking for an app fee waiver, if you want to um, email me at mike.mcbride, I'm typing it in the chat at asu.edu, I will send you the uh, link to the form for you to uh, apply for a waiver. Those aren't guaranteed. Um, you need to answer a variety of questions and then we'll determine if we can offer one or not. Any other questions? Well, thank you all for joining us. I thank uh, Nikki and or Zuhan and Jen and Nikki and uh, have, a, have a great, great day. Uh, contact us if you need anything. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks.